Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to identify the domain um, for each of our functions. So basically what we have is I have an example of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven functions that we're going to be able to identify the domain. Now remember, the domain is going to be the set of all x values that um, are part of our function. And the easiest way to really, to really identify the domain of a function without you know, looking at the graph using the vertical line test would be to say, all right, well, what would be values that cannot be a part of the domain, right? And there's basically two things that we talk about in functions um, that cannot be inside of a domain. And the first example is we cannot have a function where we are dividing by 0, right? Z we cannot have 0 as the divisor. So anytime we have an x value that is going to make the denominator 0, that value is not going to be a part of our function. So you can see here we have 1, 2, um, 3, 4 values, or 4 functions out of the 7. 4 of those functions, um, we cannot have any values that are going to be that are going to make whatever value makes that denominator 0 cannot be a part of the function. Besides that, everything else can work. The only other one we cannot have that we are at least are discussing right now is you cannot take the square root of a negative number or the even root. Any even root, we cannot take the even root of a negative number. We're going to be using square root. So you can see here we have two numbers. So those values, whatever values inside of there, cannot be less than 0. Um, so what we're simply going to do then is take a look at our um, values. And some of these, you might remember what the equation, you might know what the equation looks like or the graph looks like. Some of them, you will not know what the equation looks like. But that's OK. We're just going to use, we're going to use the, I, you're going to use the thinking that you cannot divide by 0 and you cannot take the square root or even root of a negative number. Those values will not be a part of the domain. All right, so let's go and look at the first one here. Now, the first one is a function of a linear uh, linear equation. Well, hopefully you guys understand, you know, if you look at a linear equation here, I'll just grab a scriptural graph. You can see that this graph is going to continue indefinitely up and to the right and continually down and to the left. So you can see that the x values, there is no restrictions, right? First of all, there is no fraction, nor is there any square root. So there's no values that are going to make a denominator, because there is no denominator 0. And there's no values that are, that are going to make the square root, because there is no square root. So therefore, this is all real numbers. Um, however, we are also going to use um, interval notation. So that means the x values goes from negative infinity to infinity. Because on a test or anything else, um, that's going to be your more common used um, identity. Uh, let's go to this next one here, just down below. So the next one is a quadratic. And hopefully you guys remember the quadratic here. That's a positive 1. So again, this graph is that u-shaped graph, right? So when you're thinking about this, you can see, all right, this graph is going to keep on expanding, expanding, and expanding. If there's no restrictions on it. There's never going to stop. And if you go back to our original thought here, there's no values for x that are going to make your denominator 0, because there, no there is no denominator. Well, you could say denominator is 1. Um, and there's no values that are going to make the square root 0, because in this case here, um, in the case, it's going to be uh, uh, there is no square root. So again, this is actually going to be the exact same domain, all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. All right, so now let's actually get into uh, some problems here that we're going to have restrictions. So if you look at this, here we have a fraction, right? We're a rational, a rational function. So we have f of x equals 5 divided by x minus 7. Now remember I said um, the domain is really going to be all real numbers, except you just cannot have any number that are going to make your denominator equal to 0. So therefore, whatever value makes this equal to 0, whenever, whenever x minus 7, whenever that is equal to 0, that cannot be a part of your domain. Well, you can see here now what I did is I just created an equation. So let's go ahead and solve for what values are going to make this 0. So x equals 7. Okay. So now, ladies and gentlemen, what we can see is, all right, it's going to be all, the only value that cannot be a part of this, the domain um, is going to be the value 7. So we can say is all real numbers, but x cannot equal 7. Or preferably, the way that you look at this, the way that we represent this in a graph, and um, I know we haven't really talked about this at all, but the way this is represented in a graph here, and I don't know what this graph looks like. 
The way that we represent a value that cannot be a part of the domain is by an asymptote. And the graph is going to, um, the graph is, that means those values are going to approach the asymptote, but they're never going to really touch it. Well, the graph is still going to go to negative infinity, and it's still going to go into positive infinity. It's just not going to go to negative 7. So the way that we write this in interval notation, and again, as I mentioned, I know you're saying, well, this is easy. I understand this. Yeah, it, it is basically pretty easy. But the main important thing, you're also going to want to make sure you can write something um, in this notation, though. Make sure you can also write it down in this notation, which did I write the different um, problem here? Yeah. So therefore, this would be, OK. So negative infinity to 7 union 7 to infinity. Now, again, basically what I'm saying is the graph is going to go from negative infinity to 7. And then union is going to go from 7 to infinity. The re we're using parentheses because the value of the domain does not actually include. So you, when you're using parentheses, that means it doesn't actually include the value 7. It's just going up to approaching it. Um, so these are exactly the same thing. However, this is the more common mathematical uh, referenced. OK, so now we have another equation just like that. And you can say, hey, I see a quadratic. Yes, that's a quadratic, just like that one. However, this one's in the denominator. And remember, our domain is going to be all the functions, or all x values um, that are part of your function. Well, all the values are part of your function, except for when my denominator is equal to 0. So therefore, now I'm going to have to take my whole denominator here and set that equal to 0. Now, hopefully, you should be a little bit versed in solving quadratics. Um, the best thing we want to do is see if we can factor this. And I'm actually going to do the factoring in my head. Um, what I, so basically, what we're asking is what two numbers multiply to give you 15 and then add to give you negative 2. Um, so we can see that, yes, I can factor this to x minus 5 times x plus 3 equals 0. That means x, x equals 5 and x equals negative 3. Okay, when you apply the zero product property, I'm kind of moving a little bit faster with this. So therefore, we can see that uh, the domain is going to be all real numbers except for um, all the values except for 5 and negative 3. So those are the only values that make, because those values make your denominator equal to 0. So they can't be a part of our function. So the way that I would write this using my interval notation, again, I would, um, you could basically say, it's all real numbers, which is the r, where x cannot equal 5 and x cannot equal negative 3. However, you're not really going to see that on you know, a test, so we've got to make sure we can write this in interval notation. So we always interval notation, we're going to start from negative infinity, and we're going to go all the way to negative 3. Well, it doesn't contain negative 3, so that's going to be an end of parentheses. We're going to union that with uh, then going from negative 3 to 5 union that from 5 to infinity. OK? Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we, uh, yep, OK. Um, so that's how we go ahead and write that one. Um, in this next example, we have 1 over x squared plus 2 minus 1 over x squared minus 4. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we have two, we have, you know, two things in the denominator. So if it makes one of them 0, well, it can't be a part of our function. So I'm going to set both of my denominators equal to 0. And basically, if you want to kind of get into you know, the realm, when you're, uh, when you're solving for the domain, um, when you're solving, you know, trying to find the domain, if you see a fraction, just set that denominator equal to 0 and say, all right, what values are going to make this 0? Because those are not going to be a part of my domain. Well, here, if I solve this, subtract 2, I have x squared equals negative 2. Well, when I try to take the square root here, I can't take square root of negative 2. So that means all numbers are going to be a part of my domain as far as on that rational function. However, here, when I add 4, I get x squared equals 4, square root, square root, x equals plus or minus 2. Remember, you have to include that plus or minus. So by now including x equals plus or minus 2, um, what we can see that is x is going to be all real numbers, or the domain is going to be all real numbers, except x cannot equal the plus or minus negative 2. So basically, what we're going to do now is, for an interval notation, just like we did in the last one, I'm going to go from negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to positive 2, union positive 2 to infinity. Because basically, it's all real numbers, except x cannot equal negative 2 and x cannot equal positive 2. All right. 
Now let's get over to our uh, square roots. So in this example, you can see we don't have a radical, right? We don't have a rational. A radical. We don't have a rational. So we don't care about whatever denom what numbers are going to make the denominator zero. Now what we're concerned about, um, now what we're we're concerned about here is well, what numbers are going to make that a negative, right? Um, we don't. It can be zero. It just can't be negative. So again, we're going to look into the exact same thing. We want to say, all right, well. All these numbers have to now be you know, greater than a um, certain number. But still, I'm going to want to say, all right, um, let's go ahead and set equal to 0, just like we did before. And I'll show you another way that we can do this. Our x is equal to 0. Now, basically, what we have to do, though, is really instead of writing 0, it's really what numbers are, the, all these numbers have to be greater than 0. But it's basically the same thing. Instead of solving an inequality, that means all numbers have to be greater than 6, but they cannot equal, um, or they can, oh, I'm sorry, greater than or equal to. Sorry, yes. They can all numbers that can be greater than or equal to, which is different than here. Here, the numbers basically could not equal, um, they could not equal 7, because if they are 7, then they would have made it 0. So I probably should have used like what they cannot equal um, for there, because I don't really want to confuse you. The value cannot equal 7 in this case. It cannot equal 5 and negative 3 in this case, because that, those, that's when the denominator is going to equal 0. Here, it can equal 6. It can equal 7. It can equal 8. All numbers greater than 6, but it cannot equal any number that's less than 6. So since in this, so the difference is, in here, it cannot equal 7. So that's why I use the parentheses. However, in here, it can equal 6 and just all the numbers greater than. So when I'm writing my domain, it's basically all real numbers except for the numbers that are less than negative 6. So to, we're kind of writing that you know, in the way here, you know, it's not that bad. All real numbers, x cannot equal 5, negative 3. It's kind of obvious, right? But how do you write like cannot equal, can equal 6 and above, but not anything less? That's why interval notation is so helpful. Since it can equal 6, we're going to use a bracket. And then it's going to be all values that are greater to infinity. Now, infinity is not inclusive, so that's why we always use the parentheses. Um, but 6 is inclusive, so that's why we have to use the bracket. So it's different. 7 can never equal 7. That's 0. Here, it can equal 6. We can have 0. We just can't have any numbers less than that. So now, well, what about when we have a radical and a um, rational function? Well, it can't equal something and not equal something, right? And the thing is, is again, let's just say x plus 3 you know, has to um, equal 0. We want to figure out what's going to make that 0. Negative 3, negative 3. x equals negative 3. OK, so if we put a negative 3 plus 3, that equals 0. Now, that's OK for the radical. We can have 0 under the radical. However, the square root of 0 is 0. So we can't have 0, though, still in the denominator. So therefore, we cannot have this value be negative 3, because that's going to make our radical 0, which there in, therefore, in case, is going to make our denominator 0. So x cannot equal negative 3. So it's basically going to be all real numbers where x cannot equal negative 3. Or we can go from negative infinity to negative 3, union negative 3 to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine the domain of a function. Thanks.